never thought I'd see the day. TJ had been shrugging off the bonds of free play to embrace the warmth of the written word. Ah, uh, the solitary pleasure. Ah, uh, the unbalanced kickball teams. Come on, you guys, put the books down and let's get a kick in. Shh, can't you see I'm deeply involved in a Barnaby Boys mystery? Must I exclaim it at the top of my lungs? You're gonna exclaim it? That's Barnaby's for saying something loud? I'm telling you guys, these books are the greatest. Yeah, the B-Boys rock. They solve a case a week. A case a week? That's impossible. Not for the B-Boys. They use a system of careful observation and keen logic. But TJ, that's just fiction. Solving crimes is a difficult task. And just watch the reality-based police series on cracked cases. Yeah, well, maybe the police aren't up on the latest B-Boy techniques. What? You gotta be kidding. The cops know a lot more than whoever writes those dumb books, and they still don't know who swiped the head off the bronze statue of Thomas Jefferson in the town square. And that was 30 years ago. Hello? Jefferson? I always thought that was a statue of the Headless Horseman from Irving's immortal legend of Sleepy Hollow. Well, whoever it was, the B-Boys would have cracked the case quick. Then helped the cops nab the bad guys. And still had time to joke around with their pals Ham and Dill aboard their dad's sloop, the Bloodhound. Oh, come on. Real life isn't like a Barnaby Boys book. Now let's play already before we waste the whole recess. Too late. Thanks, guys. After you, Theo. No. After you, Vin. By the way, call me after school. I have a Cracker Jack idea for tomorrow. Chocolate pudding. I'd bet my life on it. Brilliant deduction, Theo. And you'll notice the pudding's in the proof. Well, look who's here. It's the Barnaby Boys. Give us a break, Spinelli. We just want to help the world. You want to help? Lose the sweaters. Say, Theo. I noticed that Finster keeps touching her nose, but only when she passes the hot food, never the cold. Who's she signaling and why? Maybe she's sensitive to the steam from the steam tables. Maybe she hates the smell of liver. Maybe she... Hey! Whoops. Enjoy your grub, youngins. Who was that? Judging by the mop and bucket, I'm guessing it was the janitor. If that's the janitor, where's Hank? Can any of you ID this guy? Nope, not me. Uh -uh. This is big, deal. That substitute janitor reminds me of the bad guy in the case of a really, really bad guy. Gee, we have a substitute janitor. I better get the cops. Not yet, Spinelli, but this does look like a case for the, the Barnaby, Barnaby Boys. Boys. Our first mystery, the case of the curious custodian. This is going to be extra tender. This is going to be extra lame. <laughs> So, Vince, I mean, Vin, what do you guys plan to do? We're going to play a game of Squeeze the Weasel. Sounds fun, but I'm not sure I know the rules. It's not really a game, Mikey, old boy. We're going to squeeze Randall into giving us the lowdown on our mystery man. Wait a minute. How did some short, bald guy with a mop become a mystery man? You're right. Maybe he's not a man, just like the grown-up boy in the case of the dampened rug. Let's move. Oh, boy. All right, Randall, what can he tell us about the new janitor? I don't know nothing about no new janitor. The name's Earl Raymond. He worked here a long time ago. Keep on singing. I like your tune. I told you, I don't know nothing. He's substituting for Hank for two weeks, and Hank went a trip to Bermuda. Bermuda, eh? You did all right for a guy who didn't know anything. Now get out of here. Right, right. Think he knew anything else he didn't know, Vin? I don't think so, Theo. So what's your next move, boys? Well, we've got the name. Now it's time to find out who this Earl Raymond really is. He's a janitor! Oh, jeez. Can't be done. A personnel file is school property, therefore coming under the rules of the Board of Ed. Oh, come on, Menlo. Sorry, it's off limits. Shall we try Biff's technique from the case of the stifled sneeze? Yeah, that just might work. But don't we need a couple of ascots and a captain's hat? Oh, brother. Give him the file or you'll be getting something from the case of the girl who could beat the snot out of Menlo. Okay, okay. Follow me. Here it is, Earl Raymond. Apparently that is his real name. Was the janitor here 30 years ago. Then after working for a year, he mysteriously vanished. Does it say mysteriously vanished in there? Hurry up. Miss Lemon's bunion scrape won't last all day. And it seems that lately he's been sending in applications to get his old job back, even though he works as a janitor at another elementary school much closer to his home. That's weird. Why is this school so special? And why did he disappear in the first place? So many questions. And precious few answers. I got an answer for you. Who cares? Hello. What's this? It looks like an old candy wrap. And there's writing on the back. 19, 16, and 25. That's strange. Why would Earl Raymond put this in his file? Maybe he didn't. But maybe somebody else did. Someone who was trying to leave a clue as to Earl Raymond's true identity. What are you talking about, Gretch? It's quite simple. Look, the 19th letter of the alphabet is S, the 16th P, and the 25th Y. Spy! Guys, looks like we'll be spending our next few recesses spying on a spy. Oh, brother. <laughs> Anything unusual? No, 
He just keeps measuring that wall with the poster. It's the same wall I saw him tapping on this morning. He's absolutely fixated on that spot. So he likes the spot. That doesn't make him mysterious. Of course it's mysterious. I mean, what's he looking for? And why? Perhaps he was tapping the wall to see if there's something behind it. Yeah, maybe he's looking for something that was there that's not anymore. So the question becomes what used to be there. Perhaps our answer lies in the school's old blueprints. The so case of the sleazy slumlord! And right here is a spot our Mr. Raymond keeps revisiting. It just shows the wall. If only we could go back in time and see what used to be there. Maybe we can. These old yearbooks are a window into history. Can you see the time when we used to play at recess? Hey, listen to this. The children seem to love young Meryl Fencer and her innovative new ideas. Must be a misprint. All I know is we don't have an answer to our mystery, and we're running out of books. I got it! Lockers! Huh? They used to have lockers in the school, and they were right in front of Earl's favorite spot. Of course! How could I be so dense? 1916-25 is no secret code. It's a locker combination. Which means Earl must have stashed something in a locker, and now he's come back to get it. I wonder where those old lockers are now. Perhaps they put them in storage. That's a lot of lockers. I don't think this school has a storage room big enough to fit them all. Oh, yes, it does. Right behind the school clock. I never knew there was a room behind the clock. Well, there is. Quick, to the storage room. Oh, boy, we're going to solve a mystery. Will you guys quit it already? This whole thing is stupid, and you guys are being stupid to go along with it. Well, if you think we're being so stupid, Spinelli, don't come. Fine, then I won't. But Spinelli... Let her go, Mikey. We got a mystery to solve. Gee, it's pretty dark up here. Yeah, kind of reminds me of the untimely demise of Mr. Spears. Why does it remind you of an untimely demise? Because this is just like the place where they found the bodies. Ooh, bodies? Yeah, cool, huh? Rats, a locked door. A log jam in our steady stream of clues. There's got to be a way to get in. There is. A toothpick? Just like in The Case of the Purloined Chef. I took the liberty of reading the entire Barnaby series last night. Aftermath before bed. Come on. I kind of don't like it much in here. M me neither. Ah! A velociraptor! Ah! Oh, man, you guys are too easy. Man, the time for kidding around is later when we're on the sloop. Right now, we gotta find those lockers. Maybe we better split up. Split up? Yeah, if you find anything, whistle twice. Just like the Barnabys do. It's an old teaching skeleton. You mean he used to teach here? Guys, guys, I found him. Yes, here we go. Good job, Ben. But which one is it? Everybody start trying combinations. We'll find the right one. Remember, it's 1916-25. Ah! A human head! That's not human, Mikey. That's bronze. Wait a second. I got a hunch. Anybody got a nickel? It's Jefferson! And that means... It caught the guy who swiped Jefferson's head! Looks more like he caught you. Thanks for leading me up here, kids. I couldn't for the life of me figure out where they put them dang lockers. You'll never get away with this, Raymond. Actually, I probably will, seeing as the Statue of Limitations on my crime runs out at midnight tonight. Limitations? I thought it was a Statue of Jefferson. It means that after midnight, he can no longer be prosecuted for his crime. Oh. I'm gonna sell old Jeff here back to the town for 30 times what I asked for all them years ago. What did you ask for back then? Ten bucks and a head start. And now you want 30 times more? Whoa, that's nearly 300 bucks. Let my pals go, Raymond. It's me and Finn you should blame for tracking you down. Well, I'd like to let you youngins go, but I can't take that chance. You kids are gonna be locked up in here for quite a while. I hope you brought plenty of snacks. You're a very bad man, and you're not much of a janitor either. Why, you little... It's not so fast, Raymond. Hey, look, it's Spinelli! And the school police! Earl Raymond, you're under arrest for the decapitation of a statue of the third president of the United States. But, but, but it's not how it looks. Tell it to the judge. By the way, he's a descendant of Jefferson. Ah, dang it. And I'd have gotten away with it, too, if it hadn't been for the meddling kids. Thanks, kids. Another eight hours, and he would have been off scot-free. Spinelli, you saved us! I thought you said we were being stupid. Well, you were. Coming up here without the authorities. That and Biff would never do that. That and Biff? That means you read the Barnabys? Well, I might have casually glanced through volumes 1 through 64. 